Here's an example. And we just looked at a lot of marquees on, on Broadway. This is a marquee theater. Uh, the base case is incandescent lamps. They'll last about 2,000 hours. If they're on for six hours a day, and usually that's more than that, but if we just take six hours a day, that means that once a year, they have to bring in the lift, change all the bulbs. So we're looking at an annual expenditure for the labor, for the cost of the bulbs, the rental on the machine. That is typical. A retrofit case is to take all those bulbs out, retrofit with LEDs that have a 50,000 hour lamp life. Now what are we saving? We're saving energy because they consume less energy. We're saving on the replacement of those bulbs. We're saving on the labor cost and the rental. 50,000 hours with the same scenario of six hours a day translates into over 20 years. So there's a big difference in the use of materials and systems. One case, every single year, you're going out, renting the lift, getting men, materials, changing all the bulbs. In another case, it's once every 20, 22 years. That I look at as being a better use of materials and labor. Now, the cost of the LEDs and the, and the initial cost of changing the, the, the sockets and so forth, that's another issue that has to be taken into account. So the break-even point then is analyzed. What is your actual outlay of cost? How does that compare with the savings? You have a break-even point. The break-even point may be just a short few years. And at that point, from that point on, you're saving a tremendous amount of money. Here's another example of saving. This building has um, PV, photovoltaic panels on an awning system. They protect the front entrance from rain, snow. They also allow, because of the angle, they allow the winter sun to come in, but they block the summer sun. The summer sun is something that in an office building you really don't want because you have people, you have equipment, it generates its own heat on the interior. So in an office or commercial situation, you really don't want that, that sun to come in. Um, and that serves two functions. It's a shading effect and it also produces electricity. Here's another example. It's a curtain wall. It's actually the windows to the building and some panels of the glass were replaced with PV. Now that window wall or curtain wall is producing electricity. It's serving the same purpose of allowing sunlight to come in, but it also has two functions. So it's allowing vision and it's also producing electricity. On PV? The question is, what's the maintenance on PV? You could put PV on your roof. It's set a certain angle, it's tilted. Uh, the rain washes any film that develops on it. Uh, once it's installed, there is no maintenance. Maybe at the point where it's 25 years old, you want to replace it to more efficient panels. But in essence, what's happening over the 25 years is that your system is the panels up on the roof or the awning system or the window wall. Wires come into an inverter and into a panel that distributes electricity. Primarily, there's no maintenance. The inverters, after about 10 years, may have to be replaced, but there is no maintenance. It's self-washing on the canopy or the roof. Now, what'll happen over 25 years is that the material will degrade to some degree. So the efficiencies on the panels drops over the 25 years. It's still producing electricity after 25 years, not to the same extent. And in 25 years, there'll be better materials out there which will have a higher efficiency. Keep in mind that in general, just a rough number, about 5,000 square feet of PV on a roof will produce about $1,000 worth of electricity. So if you have a 
a building, an office building, and you have uh, roughly $800 to $1,200 uh, dollar electric bill, 5,000 square feet of panel will wipe that out. And if you look at the payback period, of course, there's incentives from NYSERDA. There's uh, state incentives and in, in, uh, tax rebates and so forth. So it may take eight years as a payback. But in essence, for that point on, you've got free electricity. And if you have no maintenance on it, I mean, I, I look at it as a win-win situation. Now, there's another system, which is solar thermal, and that is to produce hot water. It's very economical. You put up the solar panels on a roof. It produces hot water. And for a residence, solar thermal basically will help produce all of your hot water at very little cost. The payback period is almost on day one. So it's something to look into if you're a homeowner looking to do some uh, uh, solar energy uh, systems.